Hey there, in this video, we're going to look at the basics of one of the most useful mixing tools ever invented, automation. Now, I've spoken to so many people who are literally afraid of automation. It just seems far too hard and complicated, but it's actually a really simple thing to use. And once you master it, it's going to change your world. Automation plays a large role in our everyday lives. And to an extent, um, industrial services are mainly automated because automation technology is deemed to be more efficient than us humans doing a job or a job we used to do. In most cases, automation has actually replaced a human, but this is not really the case when it comes to music production and mixing. Some of the main reasons we use automation in music production and mixing it has saved time or gain precise control over something. And it also allows us to be more creative with things like effects. In terms of the history of automation and music, old analog mix consoles sound amazing. No one will ever argue with that. But as technology advanced, we could record more and more tracks and there were more effects. And we need to have more hands to control important tasks like moving the volume up and down on multiple tracks and then also in between sections of a song, so also things like panning. Even EQ and effects had to be manually controlled. Another big issue was that choruses could be louder than the actual verse itself, so the volume of individual tracks had to be adjusted accordingly. So, in the good old days, in extreme circumstances, there'd be a number of mix engineers all sitting there working on large projects and they'd all sit at this console and move faders and knobs around during a mix pass. This would continue over and over and over again until they were happy that they'd got the mix right. As you can imagine, this would take a lot of practice and these mix engineers were really damn good at what they did. You could probably argue that maybe automation has replaced their important role, but I don't know a single mix engineer these days who would grumble and argue that automation was a terrible thing. In fact, almost all of them would likely argue that they couldn't get through one mix session without using automation. Automation saves us time. And it generally started with mix consoles. So faders were motorized and the console could record their movement and then adjust important parameters automatically. So it'd record a movement and then you know, basically do that over and over and over again as the song played through. Now, this was great until something went wrong in terms of a motor braking, and then it was super expensive. These days, mix consoles are far more reliable, but they're still expensive. So luckily, we've got advanced doors that contain some really advanced automation functionality. In Cubase, you can automate practically anything. Let's start at the most basic form of automation volume and panning. If a certain part is too loud in a chorus, I can simply turn the automation on for the track and draw in some automation points that will automatically lower the volume when I need it quieter and then raise it back up again after the section's actually finished. I can also manually write a volume change in by turning on the right button and moving a fader. I can play through the section and use my mouse to move the fader. If I think I need to do some minor changes, then I can simply use my mouse to draw in edits. Or if I want to have another go at it, I can simply delete what I've written and do it all over again. Once I'm finished writing automation, I turn the right button off and leave the track in read mode. And that's automatically done. Every time I play through this part of my track, my automation will be accurately read and the volume will change. You might need to do a fade out on a track or on the master channel at the end of the song, in which case it's simply a matter of drawing a fade in and you can get different types of curves. Now we can automate every track. And as I said earlier, we can automate almost anything inside Cubase. So in addition to using your mouse to move a, move a fader up or down or drawing automation in, you can also attach an external MIDI controller and record the movements you're making on the external controller. Some other simple examples for automation are things like bypassing an effect, so turning it on and turning it off. And that means that they only come in when we need them to, giving us greater production impact. It doesn't just stop there for effects. We can automate almost any parameter in a plugin. 
In Cubase, you can put the plugin into automation write mode, press play, make changes to it on the fly, stop the playback, and then right mouse click on the actual effect parameter to view the automation track out in the project window. And as with volume, you can now go into the project window and start editing the parameters with a mouse in the automation data. We've already discussed write and read mode. Now that's fairly self-explanatory. Write will write the data. Read will read the data we've previously written. But what if you want to change something you've written halfway through a pass? Then you can use touch mode. In touch mode, the automation is read until you move a fader. And as soon as you move that fader, you start overwriting the previous automation data. Now, as soon as you release the fader, the automation jumps straight back to the original data. Now, this is really useful for making corrections. So basically, you're touching up a section. Auto latch is similar to touch, except when you stop making changes, the automation point will stay exactly the same until you hit stop, so playback stops. Automation is not just about getting precision or control over a mix. It's also a killer creative tool, and there's a few ways you can use it to come up with some really nice effects. Cubase has Bezier curves. Try putting some automation over the top of a synth pad, so draw in a triangle. Then pick up in the middle and put that curve in. Now comes a really cool part. Select the area and hold down Alt or Option and just drag it over. And here's a really awesome point. You can copy and paste automation data. Now let's do that a number of times so we've got a whole section of these automation curves. If you hit play, you get a really nice push-pull type of effect. Getting even cooler than that though, select another area and now pick up on the side handles and drag them up and down. See how we can start to create some really neat dynamics using automation. Another useful tool for automation is to automate a delay in and out so it only affects or impacts certain parts of a vocal line. So first, get your delay settings right so that you're happy with them. Figure out where you want the delay to kick in and out. Now automate the delay so it's only coming in where there's a break in the vocals. Try automating a simple filter to create a really nice filter suite. Automating filters and EQ is awesome fun and you can achieve some really unique sounds. Automation is not just for audio and audio effects. You can quickly automate parameters in software instruments. Once again, you can use the read and write buttons or you can right mouse click on a parameter and see the automation data out in the project window. And then you can go in and edit that. You can also see automation down in the controller lane, and you can automate MIDI data here. And once again, this is a really interesting area because with VST expression, you can click on a note and draw automation in for a number of different parameters. All of the automation done up above in the project window will affect all of the MIDI data, but using VST expression, you can get in and draw automation in for individual notes. Once you've got a lot of automation in a track, it's really important that you can manage what automation you see and also be able to enable and disable automation really quickly. So with the automation panel, we can quickly show and hide all automation data. Look, automation is actually a very simple and basic comment. You're simply ordering the computer to do something and do it right every time. And because it's a computer, it's gonna do exactly what you say, job done. Thanks for stopping by. Look, there's plenty of videos around here on automation, so hang around, have a good look around. Please leave us comments below and tell us how you're using automation or even let us know if you've got any questions. Once again, thanks for stopping by. Give us a thumbs up if you learned something and of course, subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this. I'll see you there.